All right, we're going to do a quick overview of a simple circuit and Ohm's Law, which is the meat of what we're working on during weeks 8 and 9. So as an intro activity, I'll show you, do a little demonstration of how to set up a simple circuit, how to take the current and voltage measurements associated with that, and um, uh, that's do it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's look at our supplies here. So what I have with us is a small meter, the uh, probes that go along with that, 9 volt battery, and it's wiring, a simple switch, uh, a small um, battery, or excuse me, bulb holder with fawn stock clips to make connections, and an extra wire. So we're going to complete this circuit. All right, let's take one another quick look at the circuit. So again, uh, any simple circuit is going to have a power supply, or in our case, we're calling it a voltage supply, a switch, a resistor and that closes the loop. So this is a simple circuit uh, that we'll be working with. What we're trying to explore is Ohm's Law, which tells us that the voltage on this circuit is equal to the current times the resistance. And so again, the voltage is kind of the pressure that the battery puts on the circuit to drive current around the loop. And so the current is limited by how much resistance or load you have in this location. So this is the diagram part of it. So let's go ahead and wire that up. So here's our battery. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the plus terminal around this and wrap the other around the other side. So now this is our open and closed switch. Pretty simple, but it'll work for what we're working on today. I'm going to take the other wire here um, and insert it under the fawn stock clip, and then finally the uh, last terminal to close the circuit. So let's compare this to our simple circuit we have next to it. So again, we're coming out of the power supply to the switch, and so that completes this portion here. Out of the switch, down to the resistor, or in our case, the light bulb. So that's this part here, out of the switch, into the resistor. Out of the resistor, back to the power supply. So we went through the lamp and back to the power supply on the negative side. So this is our closed switch. And so opening and closing it gets that to turn on. Okay. All right, so that's great for the circuit, but we haven't done anything about the electrical measurements. So let's talk about that one more time. So, we want to complete the electrical measurements. The first one we talk about is the pressure that causes the current to flow. And so, on any component, and if we treat our resistor as one of our little components in the circuit, we're going to want to take the voltage measurement across that device. And so, the reason I've drawn this with arrows is because they're essentially probes. We just need to touch it. That's the great thing about voltage measurements is you can make them by just making contact. Uh, as compared to current, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So let's talk about how we might make the voltage measurement on this resistor or lamp that we've got here. So on this simple meter, we're going to measure voltage. And so in the upper left-hand corner here, you'll see DC volts. So our range in this 9-volt power supply would put us above the 2,000 millivolts or 2 volts and below the 20 volts. And so if we use the 20-volt range, that should work out fine. Now, on the probes, we want to use the common side. And then if you look on here, it's volts, ohms, and milliamps. And so since we're going to measure volts, that's where the other probe. Both types of measurement use the common. And on when you're measuring voltage, you're going to use the volt ohms milliamps. So now these probes can be used to measure voltage. And so the last thing you want to do, of course, is turn it on. All right, so our first measurement, I'll demonstrate it first and we'll come back to it. So I'm going to close the circuit. And then we would want to take the voltage measurement by touching it across the probe. So one more time, we're talking about the resistor value and just touching on each side of it. So the way this is set up, I can touch on each side of the bulb and it measures the voltage. Happens to be 8.12, so that battery is a little bit dead. Okay, so let's stop that. I'm going to open the circuit for a second. So that's how you make the first measurement. Again, the key points are do your setting correctly, set up your probes correctly. All right, so let's go talk about current then. Set this one aside. So, all right, so let's take a look at measuring the current. 
So again, the voltage source is going to be the thing that drives the energy through the circuit. And the current flow is what's happening inside the wires. And so if you want to measure that flow, you actually have to break the circuit and put in a meter like is shown here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to show you how we break that circuit and change the meter so that we can read the current effectively. All right, so first we have to switch the meter around. So um, DC amps is on the right-hand side on this particular meter. So we'll spin it around, and we want to measure on the highest scale. It's always the safest way to do it is to measure on the highest scale available in case uh, your readings are higher than you expect. So we're going to set it up to measure at 10 amps. And, uh, and then also we need to measure, set it into the probe hole that's made for 10 amps DC. So that's the only change we need. For current measurements, you use common and either the milliamp scale, which is the previous hole, or the 10 amp scale. It's always safer to start with 10 amps first. So now our meter's all set. Now, to open the circuit, we pull that free. Let me put this back up because I came loose here. Okay. And open this up and I want to include my meter. So again, I'm going to stick this in here so I've got the ground connected and then I'm going to make contact here. So the way our circuit goes is out of the power supply, through the switch, out of the switch, out through the meter, out of the meter, back to the bulb and out of the bulb, back to the power supply. So now our circuit includes the meter. So let's go ahead and close this circuit. Now it's powered up. And so it's measuring the current in the line, and in this case it's 0 0.09 amps, otherwise 90 milliamps approximately. And so that measurement will come back to in just a second. All right, so let's take a look at the calculation. So we don't know the, what the resistance of that bulb is right now. And that's one of the great things about Ohm's Law. I can help you figure that out. So let's set this aside. We'll in our other sheet here. So our purpose here is to kind of validate Ohm's Law or take measurements. Ohm's Law is again the voltage equals the current times the resistance of the component. So we're talking about the resistor itself. So we want to find out what the R value is through measurement. So we solve this for R, which results in voltage divided by current, and those are in volts and amps. So now we need to complete these measurements. Now, so we took one measurement here on the voltage. Let's do the current one while, we, while we've got it already set up. Again, I'm gonna, the circuit's closed, I'm measuring the current, and we had 0 0.09 amps. All right, so that's the denominator, 0 0.09. And I'm gonna put the, hook the circuit back together. And I wanna measure the voltage again. So I'll make the quick change here back to voltage and switch the terminals back. Again, 20 volts was the range and the volt ohm milliamps on the probe here. So now we're going to again measure across the resistor and see what voltage it's seen. This battery is dying as we speak. It's 7.85. So 7.85. And of course you do that uh, division and you end up with, it's actually approximately 90 ohms. So ohms is the measurement of resistance. Now. That completes the electrical measurement of uh, this from the voltage and current measurements. But we could also measure it directly. Let's do that really quick first. So now I'm going to uh, undo the switch and take out the bulb. Now, the bulb's terminals are on the very end and the side. And one thing you're doing in class when you take apart your flashlight is I want to help. I want you to help me understand what's going on. How are the connections made inside? This is a kind of a hard part to understand, but let's take the measurement of this resistance. So on the meter, there's an ohm scale. That is the symbol for resistance. So we want to switch to that, and I'm going to switch it to about the 2,000 ohm scale because I have some prior knowledge here, and then take the measurement. And so I'm going to touch the bottom of the bulb and the side. I'm going to switch it to 10, 200 ohms, a little, shrink the scale down a little bit. And this thing is a little bit warm. So it's only reading 27 ohms, but it is dropping. And I can help explain why that's happening right now. You see it dropping from 23, 22, 21. Actually, when it gets cold, 
It has a different resistance. Now let's talk about that for a second. The, when it's cold, the resistance is actually measured at about 10.8 ohms. So, and this happens because one thing about light bulbs that won't be like the material you're working with in class is when they get hot, their resistance properties change. And so that's the unique part about light bulbs, incandescent bulbs in particular. So, again, we've verified uh, that we can take current and voltage measurements and we can use them to calculate resistance. Our bulb is a little bit of a, a confusing element, but the resistors you'll use in class will be very close values. Your measured values will match very closely with your calculated values. Now let's do a quick summary on the voltage measurements and current measurements. Again, the important part when it comes to measuring voltage is to choose your range correctly. So in class, again, we'll be using a 20 volt range. We'll be using our Uno 32s in a 5 volt um, power so as a 5 volt power supply initially and so we'll be able to take measurements on a 20 volt range. You want to make sure you have the probe set up correctly. In this case, uh, to measure voltage, you want to use the volt ohms amps scale and the common. Now, the great thing about voltage again is you can measure voltage without changing the circuit. You can measure across a device to see how much voltage it's seen. Um, that not, same is not true when you're measuring current. Again, current for us is going to be in DC amps and we'll normally start with a 10 amp scale and then also choose the correct terminals. When you're using the 10 amp scale you want to be in the 10 amp probe and the common. 10 amp DC and the common. Now the most important part of course about the measuring current is that your meter has to be in the path of the circuit. You want the current you want to measure. Let's revisit that one more time in particular because it's so important here. So when you're looking at a regular simple circuit, easy enough, but when you want to measure the current, you have to break that circuit and put your meter in the circuit. So that's the quick overview of how to take measurements for week eight. Uh, we'll have, you should watch the second video on how to um, set up your um, four series resistors and take the measurements that we'll be using in class. That brings us to, to a close.